want to acknowledge real quick, I know we don't have the choir singing in person, but as remarkable of a musician as Sam is, I imagine that he would have a hard time playing both the trumpet and the pa piano <laughs> at the same time in person. Oh, you can't? Oh, okay. Sorry, my mistake, my mistake. Got a little like late night thing going on. Thing. How you doing? Sorry, anyways. Our second lesson for this morning comes from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had need. There was a Levite, a man of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Lord God, thank you for this day and your abundance your abundance of grace, your abundance of freedom, your abundance of gifts bestowed upon us. Fill us with your abundance of spirit that we may hear and know your word for us this day. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Imagine visiting a place and walking through the streets and seeing no one in need. Not a single person. What would that be like? Some of us maybe have a, a little hard time thinking of that. We're used to seeing need all around us. Or more specifically, not seeing need all around us. We don't see a lot of things, don't we? Under overpasses, on the streets. We don't see quite a lot of people on street corners with cardboard signs. What would it be like to actually see and be in a world where there was not need? Some of us are pretty cynical. Maybe we can't think of that. We might assume that there must still be some who are living large and those who are maybe not as much in need, but still. Maybe we can't really just even think of a world like that. And yet this is what we have from the book of Acts, of what the early church looked like. That one sentence, let me read it again. There was not a needy person among them. Let that sink in. What does that actually mean? What does that actually look like? 
And interestingly enough, and it took me a while to realize this because we don't talk about this part of Acts a whole lot. This is the second time that that bold statement has been made, and it's only chapter 4. Acts paints a world where people are actually taking care of one another. They're giving up their own property in order that others might benefit. Not only that, but this is such a core part of their understanding of how the world works that immediately after this, there's the story of Ananias and Sapphira. You want some fun reading? Go ahead and and look at Acts chapter 5. I'll sum it up for you real quick. We're told of Barnabas who goes and takes his property and brings all of the proceeds and lays at the apostles' feet. Well, Ananias and Sapphira, they also sell a property. But they don't give all of the proceeds. They hold some of it back, and yet they claim that they have given it all. And it does not turn out well for them. It's wild. But that's how important it is for this community. It's rooted in this clear understanding that John proclaimed. A proclamation of what the kingdom of God might look like that those with two coats may give one to the one who has none. That those who have food would give to those who don't have any food. But you know, John wasn't the first to proclaim this kind of world. Now it goes further back, the prophets proclaimed a world where justice flows down like river and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. They criticized Israel and the leadership. For instead of living up to the, the standards that God had set in the law to actually care for the widow and the orphan, they would literally step over those who were on the side of the streets on their way to worship. The prophets made bold claims Like, God doesn't even care about your worship services. Because this is how you get to them. It's not fun to hear, is it? And it's easy to say, well, that was a long ago time. That was a special circumstance. That was this community that was just getting started. We can't possibly do anything like that anymore. But if we're honest, maybe it stirs something in us. A wonder, a hope of what could be. What does the gospel say to us? What does our faith say to us in the world around us? What does our faith have to say about the economic disparity that we see around us every day? What does our faith have to say to us when we can't even imagine a world where no one is in need? What does our faith have to say when my first job 25 years ago was at Burger King? The hourly wage that I made then is now 25% higher. But the Whopper that I built, which is $1.99, is now over $4. What what does that have to say 
to the world we live in. When most of the people I worked with then and most of the people who work in fast food now were not like me just trying to make a little pocket change but are trying to live. But the rent is twice as much as it was then. Gas was a dollar, less than a dollar here in Louisiana then. What does our faith have to say when there is huge disparity between races in economic opportunity? It's very easy to say that it has nothing to do with it. That this is a fairy tale. That this is a world that could never happen again. But what does it say to us today? How do we speak for those who are on the margins? Who work multiple jobs to barely make it by? What does it say when our sisters in the workplace make far less than our brothers? What does it say when people of color make considerably less? If our faith has meaning, it has meaning on the ground. What does it say to us who have closets full of clothes and pantries full of food? We have more than what we need. How do we live a life that is generous? How do we become sons and daughters and children of encouragement to those around us? How do we live a life as if the kingdom of God is here and now and we are making ground. We are setting up places where the kingdom of God might actually be seen. What would it look like if someone were to come into our community? To look around and notice that there is no one in need. What would that say? What would that do? These are not easy questions to ask or answer. And there are no simple answers. But our call as the people of God, called by Jesus Christ, is to proclaim the kingdom of God. Not only in some future date, but the kingdom of God right here among us. Amen.